So Morgan and I just got her inside. Welcome back y'all. I'm super excited to bring y'all this F100 project. This is actually a little more special than most of my other projects because I've actually had a huge passion for these 70s model Fords for quite a while. Funny thing is, back in high school, I actually drove around to people's houses that had these trucks out front and asked them if they were for sale. Um, most of them didn't answer or most of them um, said no, they weren't for sale. In all reality though, I couldn't have purchased one at that age because I didn't have the money or the time. But now I can actually justify living that dream. So y'all come join me on this build. So first order of business is obviously getting it running so I can move it around the yard without having to pull it uh, because that's kind of annoying and Morgan doesn't love having to help me. <laughs> so we're gonna close the garage and then we're gonna start working on it. Yikes, this thing just... Holy crap. I guess squirrels used to live in here. There is a bunch of acorns all over the top of the block as well. So I'm probably gonna try to make a hood light, something that'll provide a lot of light for the engine bay because I wanna be able to see what I'm doing, but also I wanna be able to show y'all in detail and it's kinda of hard when there's poor lighting. So I got some extra four foot LEDs I'm gonna rig up to plug into the wall and maybe put some, I don't know, magnets on it or something to be able to mount it on the hood so it can provide a lot of light. So the engine bay light is done. It doesn't look the best. I mean, it's got duct tape and wire nuts plugged into an extension cord, but it works. That's the most important thing. It provides a lot of light. And also one really nice thing is when you lean over, um, there's not a huge shadow casted by my big head, which is really nice because, you know, I don't want to block everything by my big head. Anyway, the first order of business is going to be pulling out each spark plug and doing a visual inspection with the camera to try to get a good idea of what the cylinder walls look like. I don't know when the last thing this thing ran, so you know it'd just be good to get a preliminary idea. After that, I'm probably gonna get some marble mystery oil and put it in all the cylinders and agitate it with my blow gun to make sure all the walls are gonna be lubricated. Um, because after that, I'm going to spin over the motor with my hand or with obviously a ratchet or something. And then if I feel like everything is good, I'm gonna try to start it. I'm gonna throw a battery in it, make sure all the wiring is good, which might take me a little while. I mean, everything's kind of just thrown in here. But after that, I'm gonna to try to start it. I'm probably gonna have a fuel bottle hooked up directly to the fuel pump because I don't trust that fuel tank and what's in it. And if it doesn't start then, then it's probably the carburetor, which I'll take off, clean and rebuild. And then it hopefully should start then. There's a small chip out of the piston. Overall, it looks pretty good though. Okay, let's see in there. Maybe all the pistons have that little nick on the side. That may be what it is. Ah, it looks pretty good. Kind of hard to tell. It doesn't look too bad though. A little bit of surface rust it looks like on the cylinder walls. I put some marble mystery oil on it. So now I'm gonna take the really long blower stick it in each cylinder, and then blow the marble mystery oil around to try to get it on all the walls. So 
So all the cylinder walls are lubricated now, so I don't have to worry about scarring any of them by spinning the motor over. So um, since all the plugs are out, I might be able to spin it over by hand with the fan pretty easily. Uh, it spins pretty good. I mean, little to no resistance with the plugs out. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. It seems like um, everything's in pretty decent shape. I guess the next step is to hook up a battery and see if I can figure out the wiring or jump start the starter solenoid and see if I can spin it over there. So before I try to crank anything up, I noticed there's a ton of rust that fell onto the top of the air cleaner um, out of here. And when I purchased it, there was no air cleaner on it. So I'm wondering if there was some crap that fell into the carb slash intake. So I'm gonna use the shop vac to suck up as much as I can from on top of the intake and the carburetor. And I'll probably pull the carburetor off to verify there's nothing inside the intake. Cause I don't want that stuff to get sucked into the cylinders. So it looks like I got basically everything that I could. Um, after I get it running and driving, I'll probably just pressure wash everything. I'm gonna throw my battery that I got in here though, first. I'm not even sure what's supposed to go to what. Well, this, is, this is definitely ground, this goes to the block. So I just finished getting the interior cleaned out and it looks better. It's not disgusting in terms of at least crap on the floor. Now obviously there's like mold and it's, it is pretty nasty. Don't get me wrong. The carpet's filthy. The seats are pretty dirty and tore up, but it's, you know, it's decent for right now. When I first got it, I tried to get the lock cylinder out of the ignition. Ended up destroying both. Uh, because I didn't have the keys for it. So I had to buy a new ignition and a new lock cylinder. So I'm about to hook it back up. All you do is slide it through here and line it up like, I think it's like that or something. I don't know, something something, something like that. Um, but you just slide it through, put this keeper on it, and then you plug it in. So it's relatively simple, but I'm going to get this in. I'm about to go to the store and get a few parts, like a starter solenoid, because I think the one I have is is rough. I don't know if I trust it. Might as well just get a new one now, so I don't have to worry about it failing in the future. So, new ignition, new lock cylinder, new starter solenoid, and maybe that's enough to get this thing started? I don't know. So I plugged it in. Now to push it through. I think that's right, right there. So now I'm just going to slide this coupler on there. Just gonna get a screwdriver to keep on tightening it. So I just got back from the store on the 600 and I went ahead and got some stuff that I was gonna need like a full oil change. Um, you actually bought five quarts and you got a free filter. So for all of this, I got it for like $30, which is a really good deal, I think. Um, and then I also got a starter solenoid for reliability purposes, the one that came with the truck just looks rough and I'd hate for it to fail, you know, after starting to drive it. So and then I got a terminal as well because I was missing one. Um, I got the positive, but don't have the negative. So I'm gonna throw that on there and then try to figure out what all goes onto the positive terminal. And then um, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be able to turn the key and at least turn it over. Uh, that would be kind of nice. So here's the starter solenoid, 
This says I, maybe for ignition, S for starter. I think it was, yeah, it was mounted right here. I found these bolts over here. So that's what these would be too. So I'm gonna put this thing right here. Actually, it might go. I don't know why all this stuff was disconnected and off of it when I purchased it. So I'm assuming some of these wires go onto these terminals. Probably change this wire. It looks like it's some like speaker wire, like some thick stuff for like stereo systems, but. Wires. I got the positive running to this side of the solenoid, and the one that goes to the starter is on the this side. And then this one says S, and this one says I. So I'm assuming this yellow. Actually, no. It looks like it's coming from this direction too. Honestly, I don't know. Absolutely no clue. I'm gonna have to go look it up. Try to figure out what wire goes to what. So I did a little bit of research, and it looks like. The red with blue actually goes to the S for the starter, and then the brown actually goes to the I for ignition. Um, and I think that's all you really need. I think that's the only thing that actually controls the ignition and the starter relay. So I'm gonna hook those up real quick and then jump inside and see if, if I turn the key, if it does anything. Let's go see what that does. That's not it. So there's something more than that. Fuel line comes off. Death is gonna need some fuel lines probably in the near future. These are stiff. I'm gonna mark, this looks like the choke. Yeah, it's the choke cable. I'm gonna mark it where it's clamped at, and so I can put it back where it is. Pop it off. Now I gotta unbolt it. Oh. Definitely needed to get a new gasket for sure. So I don't really love what I see. So I'm gonna take my camera and try to look in as far as I can see. I'm gonna try to suck out as much as I can. There is some rust on some of the parts of the carb. They don't look the best. So I'm gonna have to probably run that through a parts washer or probably an ultrasonic cleaner preferably. I'm pretty happy with that. There's no actual crap inside of it. So I'm, I'm fine with that, honestly. So I'm gonna clean off the gasket surface, um, probably clean the carburetor up, and then throw it back down. So both these wires were hanging down here, and so they looked like they went on the solenoid. So I went on the battery side of the solenoid, and let's see if it turns over. Hmm. So I'm looking at one of these wiring schematics for one of these older Fords, and it looks like on the coil itself, there should be one wire going to the ignition system that's on one of the terminals, and then another on the other terminal is supposed to be going to the um, distributor, and there's another wire that goes somewhere else, and I can't figure out um, which one's which right now. Um, the schematic said C... I think it was D and B or something like that, but this is positive and negative. I don't, I don't know which one's which, but it's currently two wires hooked up to negative. But this crap was going on. This thing was like wrapped up in electrical tape and just 
twisted together. So that crap uh, has got to be fixed, at least temporarily fixed until I rewire this whole thing. Uh, I'm going to really clean it up once I kind of get it running and driving, but screw it. I can't figure out why the key's not cranking it, so I'm going to jump the solenoid real quick just to have it turn over a few times. So it's the next day and I'm really trying to diagnose why this motor is not turning over with the key. Um, to make myself feel a little bit better, I yanked out a bunch of the wiring that was hanging down here in the engine bay. Um, some of this stuff went to the non-existent radio, so I'll have to rewire that when I install a new one, but not too concerned with that right now. I want to try to get this thing running. And yesterday when I turned the key and hooked everything up, um, I think for the first time or whatever, I did hear a quick noise that sounded like a starter, but it went away after like a quarter second. And then I wasn't able to have any other progress other than that. And today I've been using the multimeter to try to figure out what has power and what's good. Um, like I tested to make sure there was power at the ignition. And then just earlier I was connecting um, the ground obviously in the battery. And then silly thing is I decided to test the terminal on the starter relay and it's giving me voltage now, it's, which it should always give you voltage going directly to the battery. But earlier it did not. It didn't. It had no voltage on this terminal, which it should always have um, 12 to 13 volts. I decided to wiggle this wire and the windshield wipers turned on. So it looks like we have a bad connection on this positive wire. So I might deal with it for right now but then I'm gonna swap it out later because um, it doesn't even look like the right wire it looks like like heavy gauge speaker wire um, regardless I am going to just mess with it like this as long as it's getting power it should be good oh oh yeah no let's see yeah now it's getting 12 volts so let's turn it over real quick make sure there's nothing in the intake and just see if it turns over see if that was the problem Oh, it's down here. Oh. Let's see what turns these things off. All right, that's that. Oh, it's gonna get them. There we go. I am super excited I got the engine turned over by the ignition. That was kind of my main goal this weekend was prep the engine so it wouldn't get damaged once we turned it over and then get the key to be able to turn it over itself. Um, and we did that. So next video I'm probably going to buy new spark plugs, hook all the spark plugs back up, um, then probably get an auxiliary fuel bottle over here just to temporarily run it to the carburetor and then rebuild the carburetor as well. And then hopefully it'll run after that, fingers crossed. And then we'll probably do an oil change and just some maintenance to make sure when we do get it running, it runs good for hopefully a long time. Catch on the flip side.